this drawing. So the manufacturer and the quality inspector can have their own decision on how to measure this futures and what is the correct future, what is the wrong future, and which in turn will give us the alpha error and beta error. Beta error, okay, the good, good parts getting rejected is acceptable to a certain limit, but bad parts getting accepted in all industries. This is a simple demo wherein you can see the importance of communicating the design intent clearly. This is a simple case where I have, wherein I have given only one dimension and we have talked about the same dimension getting inspected and where it may end up in different errors. Think about cases where you have to design a medical equipment, automotive safety part, the seat belts, the restraints, the airbags, the seats. Think about any safety part and if this is going to be your design intent, if this is going to be the way you are going to detail your part, it might end up in any one of the error and it might cost a huge to the company and not to mention the damage it is going to happen to the human lives. So we engineers have a great part communicating the design intent clearly to the manufacturing and to the inspector personnel. And finally, we have to make sure that our design is, intent is captured as required and delivered to the customer perfectly. This is one simple demo of why we need a GDNT standard at all. There are so many other instances how GDNT will help us. For example, the square tolerance that we were talking before. Square tolerance is an illogical way, that being the starting point of dimensioning tolerancing. From there on, we have ended up in cylindrical tolerancing, which is more logical and which will more help to our manufacturing interchangeability. And like such, we have so many additional benefits out of GDNT.